The CCNA is a hard exam. I'm not sure how clear I made that in the last video, but it is hard. You can't just watch some videos, do a couple labs, do a couple flashcards, and think you're prepared for the exam. You have to study really hard to pass this, right? Even though it's technically entry level, it's still really hard. Maybe there's someone super smart out there who can pass in like a month, but that wasn't me, and chances are that's not you too, right? Unless you're like that, I don't know. If you don't use the correct study materials and you don't use them properly, you could be wasting a lot of your time. Last video, I talked about my experience taking the CCNA, and today I'm gonna to go more in depth of what are the materials, what are the study methods that I used to study for this test. So again, the four things I used are Jeremy's IT Lab, which comes along with Packet Tracer and Anki, and then also Boson XM. So first, let's talk about Jeremy's IT Lab. There are three parts to Jeremy's IT Lab CCNA course, his lectures, his labs, and his flashcards. So if we look here, the lecture, like this DHCP for example, this is where he explains the topic. This is where he's going to dive into what is DHCP, why is it used, and how to configure it. The way I took notes actually it wasn't even that good. Um, a lot of times I was just copying what Jeremy's IT lab put in his slides. Well, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to see an example here, DHCP. A lot of times I'm just putting what he put in the slides and taking screenshots of his slides. Um, so it's not really a good way to do it. Don't don't come to me asking for um, CCNA notes and advice on taking notes because I don't know the way I did it was not very good. But yeah, just make sure you pay attention, take some notes during the um, lectures, and you should be good for that part. So this is day thirty nine. Day thirty nine lab is the lab. It's usually a packet tracer um, lab like this. It's usually pre configured, and then you would just have to do the configurations that is stated in the steps. The thing I really like about these labs is that he doesn't give step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete each step. He just gives you what he wants in that step and you have to figure out the rest, which is really good for learning actually. One big mistake that a lot of people make when studying for their CCNA is they only watch the labs and the lecture videos. They don't do the actual labs, they don't do the flashcards, so they're just watching videos and thinking that they're um, gaining information, thinking that they're gaining knowledge to help them pass the CCNA but they're not. You can think you know the information by watching the video, but until you actually do the lab, that's where you really start to understand things. If you've ever tried to learn how to program, it's like the same concept, right? You can't just watch videos on coding tutorials, how to do hello world in this language. You actually have to go into the code editor, you have to go into Visual Studio Code, you have to actually do the programming yourself before you're able to learn it because even if you watch the video, you're not getting anything until you actually get hands-on and follow along with the tutorial. After completing the lab, if you still don't understand it, you could just do it over and over again until you're able to fully grasp what's going on, until you're able to memorize the commands. And even if you still don't understand it by doing over and over again, you should try making the lab yourself, right? Going into Cisco Packet Tracer, just opening up a blank file and just creating the topology yourself so that you can start from the ground up and build your understanding from there. After completing the lecture and the lab, now it's time for the flashcards. So everyone hates the flashcards at first. No one wants to do them. Like it takes a long time to do, they're super time consuming. However, you have to do them, right? In my opinion, it's not really a debate. So how do you do the flashcards in the most efficient way? This is the way that I did it and it worked for me. After doing the lecture and the lab for one day, since Jeremy's IT lab is sectioned into, into days, I will do the flashcards on that given topic. Right, I will not go to the next lecture until I completed the flashcards for this day. So before moving on to the next day, there are three things that I have to do. First, I have to complete and understand the lecture. Second, I have to complete and understand the lab. And third, I have to do the flashcards for that day before moving on to the next. You should think of these three things as the prerequisites before moving on to the next day. If you move on to the next day without completing the flashcards of the day you're already on, you can get easily overwhelmed with the amount of flashcards you're gonna eventually have to do. Some topics are easy and there's only like 20 flashcards and other topics are big and have like 50 flashcards you have to do for them, right? It all depends on how important that topic is. And one last thing, I can't really believe I have to say this, but one last thing about the flashcards is you really have to be honest with yourself, right? I remember when I was first doing the flashcards, if there was a flashcard that I didn't know the answer to, I would just skip it. Like I would press good on Anki, which means like I know the answer but I didn't know the answer. I just didn't want to say that flashcard again. It was not really a good way. Only reason why I did this is because I was too lazy to understand and learn what that flashcard meant. So I just skipped it altogether. Do not do this. It'll actually hurt you later on. If you see here, this is the flashcard deck that I used. So I made a big deck called Review CCNA Cards. And within that deck, I put all of the smaller 
um, flashcard decks that Jeremy's IT Lab provided. So I have from day one all the way up to day 63. So oh yeah, if you see, I have 1500 flashcards due because I haven't been doing the flashcards ever since I passed the test. After you complete the lecture, after you complete the lab, you'll do the flashcards, right? You'd put them in Anke and do the flashcards. And after you complete those flashcards, you would drag them into this big deck so that you can review all of them together in a random order. I'll put a link to Jeremy's IT Lab's video explaining how to use his Anki flashcards in the description. A lot of people in the last video were asking me how much time did I spend studying on the CCNA and how, how do you not get overwhelmed with the amount of flashcards you have to do? Because there are a lot of flashcards you have to do. But the thing is, you just have to take it one day at a time. One thing that you have to do for the CCNA is you have to be consistent, right? If you miss one day, you're going to have a bunch of backlog flashcards due. If you miss a day, you just have to do a lot more the next day. Uh, just don't try to not to miss more than one day in a row or else the amount of flashcards you're going to have to do is actually kind of insane. These are my stats for this flashcard deck, the CCNA flashcard deck. So I started in May 14th and I ended August 5th. So within this timeline, I was basically studying Anki every single day. There are a couple of missed... Actually, there's a lot more missed days than I thought there were there would be so i was basically studying every day and if you see one day 123 right some days i only did like five reviews i don't know why and other days i did a lot more so i was saying on average like 150 a day for these two and a half months for the flashcards you really have to be consistent and not even just for the flashcards right just for studying in general you have to be consistent it's better to study a little bit every day than to cram everything in one night because that way Studying every day helps you remember a lot better. So you've completed Jeremy's IT lab, you've completed his course, you've done all the labs, you've done all the lectures, you're continuing to do the flashcards, you're feeling super excited, but like Kobe said, job's not finished. You still have to practice for the actual exam. You have to get a sense of the questions that are gonna come on the actual exam, and you have to get a feel of what the exam is gonna feel like. And for this, I recommend my fourth and final study material, Boson XM. A lot of people who are studying for the CCNA, they think that practice tests are optional, but they're actually not. I feel like they're mandatory to study, just as mandatory as like Jeremy's IT lab, just as mandatory as a course on the CCNA. Like I said in the previous video, Jeremy's IT lab's CCNA course will help you to become a better network engineer, but a practice test like Boson XM will help you pass the CCNA test. The best thing about Boson XM is it'll give you a good idea of what areas you are weak in, right? Without this, there's really no way to tell what areas you're weak in until the day of the test. And you're like, oh shoot. In Boson XM, there are four different exams you can do, right? Exam A, B, C, and D. And you can retake these exams as many times as you want. The way I use Boson XM and the way I think you should use it is I did exam A, and then I looked at my results. So the first time I did Bills on XM, I actually got like, I don't know, like 50, 60%. And then I looked in the areas that I did really poorly in. And then I studied on those topics. I studied for a couple of days and then I did exam B. And then in exam B, I, after that, I did the same thing. I looked at the areas I was weak in, studied that, and then I did exam C, right? You do this for exam D as well. And for me, after I completed the exam D, I got a 95 or something on the exam. So I was like, okay, I'm prepared for the CCNA. So I booked my CCNA and then I continued studying from there. If you don't get good scores after exam D, right? You can retake these exams as many times as you want. So you can just repeat the process until you're confident enough to take the test. There's also a custom mode that you can do where you can customize the number of questions you can take on the practice exam and you can customize the types of questions that you want. So like ideally, you're gonna put the areas that you're weak in in that custom exam. If you can't afford Boson XM, there are cheaper alternatives, right? I've heard a lot of good things about Jeremy's IT Lab um, practice exams for the CCNA. They're only like $10 and I heard that they're really good, but I can't say anything about that. I can't give my opinion because I didn't take them. So the only thing I use is Boson XM, so that's really good. So a couple of questions that I've been seeing online is, do you need Boson NetSim? If you don't know, NetSim is the product that gives a bunch of practice labs to do. It helps you understand the topics better and it gives you more practice if Jeremy's IT lab isn't enough or if the course that you're doing, their labs aren't enough. Boson NetSim gives you uh, more practice labs. And in my opinion, no, you don't really need this. But if you really feel like you need practice, more practice, I guess you can take it or I guess you can buy this, but you don't really need it. I actually bought this i bought um i bought netsim i forgot how much it was but it was pretty expensive and i <laughs> i did like three labs so i basically just donated to boson uh you're welcome and i guess a, a really common combo for to pass the ccna is jeremy's it lab and boson xm right 
like the tool that I use, I guess it's really common that people use this. And a lot of questions that I've been seeing is, are these two enough just to pass the test alone? Um, in my opinion, yes, but there are some people online who said that it's not enough. Some people said that they were getting high marks in Boson XM and they still failed the CCNA. So I cannot say for sure if these two are enough, right? If you are able to get your hands on other study materials, you should. But for me, these two were enough. That's all I can say because it's my experience. But just take note that other people say that these two alone are not enough to pass. So you should get my perspective, you should get other people's perspective, and you should just make a decision for yourself so that you can feel more confident during exam day. I might make some videos doing some labs on Cisco Packet Tracer or some labs on GNS3 in the future, but for now I'll see you guys in the next video.